of the Breakfast Club, bitch. Mm. All right, Charlene, please tell me, why was I your donkey of the day? Oh, I'm going to be all over the place with this one, man, because I have so many thoughts. Let me moisturize. I just put some Vaseline on my lips. I'm putting some moisturization on my elbows and hands. Don't get excited, Envy. Uh, donkey of the day for Monday, June 27th, goes to the five Supreme Court judges, Amy Coney Barrett, Samuel A. Alito Jr., Brett Kavanaugh, Neil M. Gorsuch, and Clarence Thomas. Okay, those five judges voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is what provided constitutional protections for abortion, and now um, that's been overturned. Not a surprise to anyone that's been paying attention. I mean, ever since we saw former President Donald Trump put three Supreme Court judges on the bench, we knew things like this would happen, which is why folks have been calling for now President Joe Biden to expand the Supreme Court. But since when do Democrats do anything that actually makes sense? OK, I've been telling you all since President Biden has been in the White House, four things that need to be done to protect democracy. Number one, you have to protect voting rights. OK, John Lewis Voting Rights Act or the Freedom to Vote Act that has to pass. Number two, you have to get rid of the filibuster so you can properly govern. All right. Uh, number three, you have to prosecute everyone who was behind the attempted coup of this country on January 6th from the former president to members of Congress. You have to make an example out of everyone who was behind this. So folks know not to ever try it in this country ever again. Set a precedent. And last but certainly not least, you have to expand the Supreme Court. OK, what we witnessed on Friday is the cowardice of the Democratic Party catching up to them. All right. They know what Republicans have been planning for decades. Republicans have never hidden their agenda. They have shown and told us what play they are going to run. And for some reason, Democrats never craft a defense to stop. It. All right. I mean, we didn't just get here yesterday, people. Yes. It's easy to point the finger at Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, and say, yeah, they put three judges on the Supreme Court. That's true. But I feel like the cowardice and inaction from Democrats caused a lot of this. I have a million questions that people smarter than me can answer. OK, why didn't President Obama uh, codify Roe v. Wade like he said he would when he was on the campaign trail? OK, in fact, in 2007, he promised Planned Parenthood that the first thing he would do as president would be to sign the Freedom of Choice Act, which effectively codifies Roe v. Wade. But when he got in office, he said the bill is not my highest legislative priority. Now, he did have a supermajority for exactly four months. OK, on paper, he had the votes. But just like now, you have what they call blue dog Democrats, which is basically Democrats in name only. They have conservative voting records. But this is what bothers me about Democrats always. Y'all know these people better than we do. So why do you volunteer lies about what you're going to do if you know you can't get it done? OK, and then us, the American people are just looking at y'all like, why didn't you do it? OK, because in the words of the hood whisperer, Tesla and Figaro, why y'all volunteer to lie? OK, <laughs> we ain't asking y'all to tell us these things. I got more questions. Why didn't RBG step down so President Obama could appoint a judge? Why didn't they push back on Mitch McConnell when he blocked Obama's 2016 Supreme Court judge pick? Huh? Eight months before the election. There is nothing in the Constitution that prevents a Supreme Court vacancy from being filled, regardless of how close to an election it opens up. You know how we know that? Because Mitch McConnell blocked Obama from doing it in 2016, but let Trump do it in 2020. And Dems in 2016 just took it. Like they always do. All that when they go low, we go high nonsense. No, when they go low, y'all do nothing. OK, all Dems give out his thoughts and prayers. All right. Singing in front of the Capitol building. And if you ask me, Lenard McKelvey, Charlemagne the God, Democrats cowardice has put us in this position. Their lack of inaction, which is why it's insulting when they tell us just vote. We have. How about y'all just govern, govern with urgency the way y'all always want us to vote with urgency. Stop giving us excuses. Y'all are in power now. We have a Democratic administration in the White House and what is supposed to be a slight majority in the House. But you can't ever get President Joe Manchin to be on the same page as y'all. It's frustrating because when they have a super majority and total control like President Obama had for about four months, some say two years, but it was more like four months. But when they had it, OK, they say they can't get the votes. All right. Well, give us someone to blame, damn it. All right. We already know Republicans are to blame. But when it's Dems like Manchin and Cinema or whoever, call them out. Because when you don't, you too look complicit. All right. And as far as I'm concerned, Democrats are accomplices in the Repub Republicans BS simply because they're not doing enough to stop it. But I need us to have a bird's eye view of what we're facing. It's bigger than abortion. OK, we're dealing with a party of white supremacists. Simple and plain. The GOP are full of white supremacists. There's no way around it. No need to sugarcoat it. You got Republican Mary Miller of Illinois thanking Trump for this victory for white life. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, 
I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. Look, I told y'all three years ago that these abortion bans and immigrant bans were all about self-preservation of the white race. Okay, I don't feel like explaining. I posted the old clip of me talking about it three years ago on my Instagram, at C to God, C-T-H-A-G-O-D. Go to my page, watch it. But in the meantime, go grab a book called The Birth Durf by Ben Wattenberg. But you have Mary Miller thanking Trump for a victory for white life. Senator John uh, Cornyn tweeted out that we should roll back the Brown versus Board of Education ruling. Listen, I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary. I tell y'all this all the time. I am not the strongest Avenger. But it sounds like he wants us to return to segregated schools. So what I'm telling y'all is this. This is bigger than Nino Brown. This is a government, people in power, who are white supremacists who want to take us back to a time before civil rights. And I, for one, don't know what to do. I really don't even know now, you know. Of course, I'm giving those five judges donkey for obvious reasons. But the reality is... Ugh, the Republicans are the small ones. They played the long game. They, they made the most of being in power, you know, and they got done what they wanted to get done. When they are in power, they make the most of it. Meanwhile, when Democrats are in power, they don't make the same type of radical, bold moves at all. Not even to protect us from the things that the Republicans are going to do. All right. Democrats are the donkeys, which is why donkeys are their mascot. All right. But let me talk some solutions because I could go on and on with the problems. And at this point, uh, this is all we can focus on is solutions. All right. I don't have any solutions. All right. Other than the solutions that could really change things like expanding the Supreme Court and getting rid of the filibuster so you can legislate. We know that's not going to happen. So I have to salute AOC. Drop on the clues bombs for AOC. AOC is really showing that she's a real leader. And she made me feel sane this weekend because immediately when Roe v. Wade got overturned, all you heard was all this empty, cliche rhetoric. Go vote, go vote, go vote. This is why elections matter. And as I said before, it's insulting because we've done that historically over the years. And when we do vote and get y'all in power, Democrats do nothing to defend our rights. Yes, elections have consequences, but what's the worst consequence? Having Republicans in office that are abusing their power or having Democrats in office who don't even use their power to protect us against the abuse. <sighs> but once again, salute to AOC. Uh, she stepped up and explained to the people that the solution Biden and the Dem leaders must offer can't just be one of voting. Can we listen to her, please? It's going to get worse. So long as a party, especially a Democratic Party, thinks that there is some level of horror that is going to convince Republicans to change their mind, like so long as they're banked on that, like we're, this is gonna keep happening. And when you look at people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, I mean, people aren't stupid, man. Look at the reporting, look at the disclosures. It's really not hard to put A and B together. There's a lot of people in here that are not working for you. Mm. This is a seat of power that the public entrusts to certain individuals. A lot of the times, you know, a lot of these decisions are made by default and we can't be making them by default. That just, just hearing her as a Democrat calling out the Democrats that we know are the problem, like Joe Manchin, drop on the clues bombs for AOC. I Thank you, thank you, AOC. But this is the part that really made me feel sane when she discussed why saying just vote isn't enough. Listen. Yes. Go vote. Voting is important, but it is it is necessary, but not sufficient. You feel me? Voting is necessary, but not sufficient. And so just telling people in general to like go vote in a vague way is not helpful. Thank you. Where we need to vote, <sighs> what races are most important, what seats we need to protect, where we need to flip. That matters. But then also, you know, we, what we're doing on the ground, grassroots organizing, et cetera, what, what is available and also what options are available to us between now and November so that we're not just shrugging our shoulders for five months and waiting to see where the wind blows in an election, but that we're actually giving people reasons, motivations, et cetera, yes. to vote. Yes, thank you, AOC. See, nobody takes me serious because I have a lisp, all right? But just when I think I'm going insane, here she comes speaking truth to power. All right. AOC also said we should really consider impeachment for Supreme Court judges. All right. That's a plan because we don't vote for Supreme Court judges. So if they did something wrong, lying under oath, 
then that's a reason to get them up out of here. But all of those are plans. And I'm glad AOC has some because I don't. Please give those five uh, Supreme Court judges who voted to overturn Roe v. Wade the biggest he are. Uh-huh. Matter of fact, let Remy Ma give him the biggest hee-haw. I ain't heard Remy all week. Hee-haw, hee-haw, you stupid mother are you dumb. All right. And it's not going to stop with abortion, people. I'm trying to tell you right now. They are, You see what the things that they're already talking about rolling back, all right? It, 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 everything from uh, same-sex marriage to, uh, you know, they, they want to take us back to segregated schools. Clarence Thomas said he wants to make sodomy illegal. He wants to... St- Wants to eat, just just look at it. He wants to make sodomy illegal. What does Clarence, what has anal sex ever done to Clarence Thomas? We don't know. All right. Oh, they hit the fart, right? Come on, man. You know now's not the time. Okay, never mind. Donkey today is brought to you by the law office of Michael S. Lamisoff. Don't be a donkey. Dial pound two fifty on your cell and say the bull if you've been hurt in a construction accident. That's pound two five zero from your cell and say the bull.